Hello once again. We are now into chapter 9 of Will Be Gone, and we're going to be looking at segment C of global warming slash climate change, however you wish to define it. Um, earlier we were talking about how the industrial age and the rising of the temperature seem to have a segmented pattern. Okay. Now, there's something about this that, while it isn't hidden, a lot of people don't seem to talk about it. Now, they did in the 70s, and they did in the 80s, but it seems to be kind of diminished uh, in conversation. And I'd like to just talk about that for a minute. And along with industrialization, we've also had an explosion, if you will, of building construction in the world. And the one thing that has happened is we've torn down an awful lot of trees. Now, trees and plants and other things like that are what, you know, I guess you could say eat greenhouse gases. And they turn it into oxygen, which is a very nice thing for us. That's a wonderful thing for us. Without it, we wouldn't be here. And we, as we've expanded across the globe, we've torn down an awful lot of forestation to give us our own dwellings. And I got no problems with that, per se. You know, it's how we live. It's how we're going to live. But there's something I think we can do as individuals. And in this case, even some state decisions that could be made. I witnessed when I was living in Louisville that um, the year before they had a big hailstorm, and I think even maybe they had a tornado hit somewhere or a real good threat. I, I don't really remember for sure about that. But uh, the one thing I did notice, there was an awful lot of tree removal going on in, in Louisville from households to even some of the city, the city were cutting down trees as well. Now, to the credit of the city of Louisville, when they were cutting those trees down, they were also planting new ones, and that was a good thing. As far as I was concerned, I'm like, well, that's good. It's tit for tat. Might take that tree a while to grow, but it'll get there. But I noticed that when the homeowners were cutting their trees down, they weren't replanting with any other kind of tree. And the concern with the homeowner is a natural one. In Kentucky, and Louisville especially, you have a lot of maple and a lot of oak trees. And these things are, they're up there, 70, 80, you know, feet tall, maybe even larger, maybe 100 feet. There are some big trees there. And those big trees, when they fall on something, it's just like when you see on the news when a storm is being featured, um, you know, on the news, you'll see trees falling on houses and the houses or cars crushed and all that. And you see these huge root structures that are, you know, 15 feet wide or whatever. It's a real danger when it comes to high winds and tornadoes. I mean, that's that's a reality. I agree with that. But I think something that we can do as individuals, homeowners, that is, is if you do cut a big tree down, plant a new one. Just don't plant a large growing tree. You know, a poplar, not a poplar, uh, what do they call that? They call it a pear tree and it grows like this. You know, it gets about 15 feet wide, has a trunk about a foot, I think at its full growth, and it will grow to be about 20, 25 feet. Now, that's a nice little replacement tree for the big tall one that you tore down. Something small like that hits your house, it's like, you know, get off me. <laughs> it's not going to be much. might break a window or something, but it's no big deal. You, I mean, you won't even file an insurance claim, and so the damage would be so minimal. And there, I mean, a pear tree is not the only kind. There's a lot of others. Matter of fact, something you might think about doing is planting a fruit tree. You could benefit that. You know, you could, uh, if you got children, they can run around the neighborhood and sell the fruit for 50 cents a piece or whatever, makes a little bit of money off of it. 
So I think as a homeowner, you can definitely do something about uh, replacing the big trees that you cut down. Or possibly even like a big bush or something that'll grow. Anything. Don't keep it bare. Do something. You know? I mean, that's our oxygen going away. I just wonder if the oxygen content, you know, has been dwindling as time goes forward. I mean, we use it when we breathe it. And we're cutting down all these trees and not replenishing them. So it only makes sense that if the carbon is not being distilled, if you will, by the trees, that the carbon content would increase. So is it man-made industrialization global warming that's going on? Or is it the deforestation of vegetation that's been going on? It might be one of two things in that regard. I'm not really sure. Uh, that's a choice or decision that you can think about on your own. Um, on a governmental level, and this is something I've always wondered, I've driven a lot of places, I've driven down a lot of divided highways, and I just don't understand at all why we mow those divided highways, and thus cutting down any new tree growth that might want to grow. It just seems to me like if we're going to manicure those divided highways, well, why not plant some trees that, you know, could help reforest that, or bushes, you know, if you don't want big trees falling across the, uh, the highway, which I could understand fully, um, but when you look at these divided highways, you got quite a bit of room on some of them, so if you plant a 20-foot tree in there, by 20-foot, I mean, that's the maximum growth that it has, if it falls over, it may or may not block one lane of traffic so traffic could still get through it won't block the entire highway until somebody gets in there and cuts it and drags it off um, so I think the country as a whole has been remiss in this kind of thing when you go say 95 from Jacksonville Florida and you drive north there are a lot of places in like Georgia and South Carolina where you can't even see the opposite lane of traffic. And I'm thinking to myself, that's a great thing. Because that's natural forestation going on there. So I guess basically what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, quit mowing in between the lanes and let Mother Nature take it over. Ten years from now, you might have, you know, bushes or trees that grow up. Well, that's great. Let it do it. And then later on, if you say, well, this tree grows 20 feet tall, this one grows 50 feet tall or 80 feet tall, let's cut this one down before it matures and let the 20 footer grow. And if there's nothing growing there, you know, it doesn't, a little seedlings, it doesn't cost a whole lot to do that. And you don't have to jump out there and, you know, like in South Carolina, you got. 200 miles or so of Interstate 95, you know, you don't have to go out there and attack the whole thing. Do a mile a year. 20 years from now, you got 20 miles done. You know what I'm saying? It's not something we have to hurry on, but it's just something to think about. And that could be true as well as inside in cities. I've got plenty of places that I drive where I see where we actually do that. Here in Jacksonville, they redid a road, and when they did that, they put some small trees on there. Some of them died, but some of them lived. And I thought that was a great thing that the city of Jacksonville did. They reforested the inner city, or the inside of the lanes, where nobody's going to drive anyway. And truthfully, if you do that, what's another thing that you're going to be preventing? You're going to be preventing cars jumping over and facing online traffic if, say, they blow a tire or something like that. I mean, speaking as a guy who drives on the roads, I mean, I'd hate to see it, but I'm glad to see it. If I see somebody pop a tire and they hit a tree, well, that's a hell of a lot better than popping a tire 
and hitting me. Because instead of one person, you may have two that either get severely injured or even die. So, you know, it's not a thing of where you're saying you're glad to see that they hit the tree because, you know, you want them to die or get injured. You're just glad to hit the tree because they didn't hit you. And by filling in those divided highways with trees and with natural vegetation growth, you might prevent that. Because if the car hits a bush, that's going to start slowing it down before it hits the tree. So, just another thing to think about. It's not something that's written in stone. Just a thought for you. Um, I think that pretty much handles the you know, the greenery aspect of it. I mean, you know, if you do plant, say, fruit trees around your house, well, maybe you might think about canning those fruit trees, you know, the fruit tree product, uh, giving it to your neighbors. You know, somebody's got a peach tree and they're growing peaches and they can those peaches. you got a plum tree, well, then swap a couple cans with it. Say, hey, man, I'll give you two jars of these plum preserves you give me two jars of those peach preserves and just do that around your neighborhood nothing wrong with a little bartering system just something you know that you can think about um you know i think i'll end it there that's pretty much all i really wanted to say that'll conclude uh segment three one more to go